Welcome back to the Rich YouTube channel. Today, so let's be learning how to make this beautiful Lego button sleeve. So, be learning how to adapt this into an off shoulder sleeve and how to cut and sew this at the same time. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. So the first thing we will do is to quickly draft our basic sleeve tutorial. So it's going to be a long sleeve. So the length of my sleeve is going to be around 23 inches. If I have it there, and then the hand wheel I'm working with is 7 inches. So I'm adding 1 inch seam allowance. And that's going to leave me with 8 inches. So I'm going to make that into a straight line. So we are drafting this using the freehand method. So it's going to be very simple and fast. And this is just the half scale of your sleeve so we have this space to work with so for my cap set i'm going to go down by four inches okay between three to four inches depending on how big the person is so on from that four inches now the next thing i'm going to be using my free hand to connect from the head of my sleeve in a slanting form to this cap height okay you want a one more professional way of drafting your basic sleeve we have a detailed tutorial already on the channel but this is just a quick way you can draft your sleeve so after that now you move straight to your to your hem and then on the hem i'm going to take the round sleeve measurement okay well, however it is you want it to be but just something enough especially if you're not working with a stretchy fabric if you're not working with a stretchy fabric it's better you take this the round sleeve measurement like this okay because remember it has to pass through your hand first before it gets to your wrist so if it's too tight it's not going to be passing through your hand so once it passes through this place you'll be sure that it can go through your hand except you're working with a stretchy fabric so about i have about nine and a half inches there so the by two nine inches is going to give me four and a half so if i'm adding one inch allowance to that as well i'm going to have five inches so i just make it around five and quarter okay so after that i'm going to bring in my curved ruler and then i'm going to connect my sleeve so you can see that is one simple way so you should use your leg curve or something so I'm just going to manage what I have here and then we'll take it from there. So now after connecting it like this, I'm going to cut out my basic sleeve and then I'm going to adapt this to form our leg of mountain sleeve. Okay, so your basic sleeve is actually very important because with it you can actually get any type of sleeve that you want. Okay, so this is what I have, this is what my sleeve looks like. So now to make this into a leg of mountain sleeve, we're going to be using the slash and spread method to introduce volume to the upper part alone. Okay, so in a leg of mountain sleeve, you have the upper part big and then the lower part remain the same. It maintains its original measurement. So now depending on how you want to introduce your volume, the first thing I'm going to do now is to measure my cap side again. And then I'm going to make it into a straight line. Okay. So now to introduce more volume, I'm going to measure another slash line. So you can do two inches, you can do three inches, you can even have one, two, or three, depending on how big you want this to be. So if I have two and a half inches here, I can have another five inches here, making two extra slash lines. So I'll make that into a straight line as well. And then on my half hole area, I want to introduce another slash line there. So I have nine inches divided by four, two is going to give me four and a half. So I'm going to mark the midpoint and then I'm going to connect that to where my slash. So I have about one, two, three, four slash lines now. And then I'm going to be cutting them out and we are going to spread them. So now you're going to be cutting it from your center fold. Remember, this is our underarm area, underarm, and this is our center fold. This is going to be the fold point. Okay. So now I'm going to be cutting it on my fold point, but I'm not going to cut completely through. So you just cut to the tip enough for you to be able to spread your sleeve. So you can see me cutting just to the tip. And then I'm going to bring in another fresh fabric now and spread this on it. So you can also spread 
directly on your fabric it depends on what you want okay so i have a fresh paper here and then i'm placing my pattern on it so when you're placing your pattern you can see that i make sure that my center fold is on this outer part because i'm going to be cutting this on fold to make a full sleeve so it's very important to secure it down like that so after securing your center fold you can now start to spread your sleeve as much as you want so now we'll start spreading this sleeve now you can see me opening it up so you can spread it by two inches three inches or whatever it is you want all you just need to do is from one point you take your tape and measure how much spread you want it can be two it can be three inches once you have it you place it down and then you secure it with your tape so after securing it you move to the next one you measure whatever it is you want again and then you place it down so that's how you keep spreading it so i'll spread it out now you can see how much i've spread this because i want it to have some form of height so i have spread out all of my pattern now the next thing is for me to connect it to my center front remember i said you're going to be connecting this on fold so you can just measure out a straight line from where your sleeve your spread so remember this is the last slash line that we have there and then you just measure a straight line so that you can measure the height that you want so from that stretch line now i'm going to measure in around two to three inches depending on how high you want it to be you can measure four you can measure five and then from there i'm going to connect it in a slanting form to meet my last slash point there so you can see what i have so if you want yours to be higher from that line you can just go up by even up to seven inch six inches seven inches then you have it there i hope you can see this so if you're going up by six inches you have around six inches here and then from your six inches you connect it to that point so you can see that it is higher than what we have in there so after connecting all of that now i'm going to bring in my scissors and then i'll cut out my new shape okay following the shape that you have there okay so whichever one you want to go for you can go for the six inches or the three inches you can even be higher than that so this is what we have now you can see how big this is so this is kind of too big for me so i'm just going to be going with the smaller one okay so now to cut it on your fabric you make sure that this part of your fabric is on fold so that you have a full sleeve okay so i've placed this on my fabric and like i said this part has to be on fold so once it's on fold and you cut it out when you open out your fabric this is what you're going to have you can see how big this has become now okay you can see how big it is and this part remains the same so now for structure if you want it to be really structured if you are using fabric like damask you can leave it as it is but if you are using very soft fabric you may need to add interfacing to this hopper part so that it's going to stand by the time you finish it so if you're adding interfacing it means you probably need to add a lining to this so that i can cover up your interfacing your gum stay by the time you finish attaching it to it so i think i'm just going to go because my fabric is very soft i'm going to cut a gum stay and then use it to strengthen this hopper part but i'm not going to be adding lining to mine so just know that if you're adding a gum stay to yours you need to cut out a lining to cover up the gum stay so i'll add the gum stay to it now and i'm going to show us how we're going to sew this so I'm going ahead to add my interfacing now. It's just a small gum stay. So if you want to do yours, you can consider using something stronger. So to gather this back to its original size, you're just going to bring in your pattern. So after placing your pattern, you clearly see where your round armhole stops, which is here. Remember, this is part of our underarm area. So you just notch that part like this, okay? And then you cover it up to replicate your notch on the other side so that you're not going to be confused so now if you're adding this to an off shoulder bodies okay all you just need to do now is to bring in your your arm hole the arm hole of your off shoulder bodies to measure where the arm hole stops so once you measure where your arm hole stops 
you notch that part so that your gathers you will not want will not get to that part or, or else you want your gather to get there so what i'm going to do now is to go over to the sewing machine and run a gather stitch all around like this then bring it back to show us how i'm going to gather it to run the gather stitch from the notch to the notch that's if you want your gathers to fold the entire round ham hole but if you don't want it to run the ham hole you can just measure where you want it to stop and then from there you start gathering so now i'm just going to pull the gathers gently and then gather all of them to the round ham hole measurement so it is gathered now you can see that it's gathered back to the ham hole measurement so like i was saying if this were to be an half shoulder you sew the ham hole area the lower ham hole area to your bodies and then this upper part you are going to turn it out with your bias neatly so that it's just going to rest on your shoulder so the last thing to do now is to hem the lower part and after i'm hemming the lower part we are going to sew it together on the hand so i've hemmed the lower part and then i sew it on the underarm area so this is what the sleeve looked like you can see that the lower part may thin its measurements while this part became bigger and then the interfacing that we had it just made it stand out better so now i've had questions about how you can make your leg of mountain even with off shoulder bodies so now you can see how i have turned this neatly inwards with bias so that's how you turn the upper part then the remaining part here is where you can see that my turning stops here okay so you just measure your what you remove from your off shoulder maybe five or six inches on fold then after measuring that part you are going to turn it out so the excess that you have here is what you are going to be sewing to your remaining hammer part of your off shoulder so if it's not the shape that you want you can just go ahead and place your bodies on it and then use it to reshape the hand hole so that you can sew this part to your ham hole why this part just stays on your shoulder and it's already neatly finished so this is what it looks like now so i'm going to take it to the mannequin so that we can see the full view of the sleeve so this is what the sleeve looks like you can see that it's big on the upper part and you can see how it's standing on its own because of the stay that we applied to it so this is what the lower side looked like i can see it's fitted on the lower part so this upper part you can increase it anyhow you want remember i set it for three inches because i don't want it too big so you can make yours as big as you want i hope you enjoy making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye